Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Kubota Farm. We are back in East Vineland, New Jersey, and we are in April. Moved ahead one month. March didn't seem to have anything else to offer for us, so we just said goodbye to March, and we are now in April, and April is going to turn out to be a busy month for us. We've got quite a few things to do, and quite a variety of things to do, actually. But before we get that going, <clears throat> we're actually in the middle of doing some mowing right now. Get this field mode. Our sheep are hungry. For the first time, I have no grass for our sheep. So we are going to at least get this started for them so we can keep them fed. They have been one of the financial backbones of this farm. So I want to make sure they stay happy. I've generated a course play course um, for our new field that we bought. You can see here. So while course play is working diligently on this, and of course our tried and true Kubota mowing setup, we can skip on over back to the farm here and and oh couple things one as expected weeds did show up on our sunflower field those good for nothing weeds and we could use a hoe but unfortunately the hoe is busy but i'm boom <laughs> just kidding um since we haven't used the sprayer we're going to use a sprayer and i got our m8 and i got our little narrows on there crop destruction isn't turned on but you know what i think it's kind of nice to run tires that you're supposed to be running and i'm guessing narrows are supposed to be on there when you're doing this kind of business so that's what we're gonna do and look what i bought you give me money in the bank and i'm gonna spend it that's just the way it is i bought this beautiful i believe it's 82 studios uh, gooseneck trailer and if I'm being honest the thing was cheap this is like 8,000 bucks and even better because of this handy thing we call the color configurator it is truly in Kubota orange can I get an applause please <laughs> I don't know if it's worthy of that, but it actually is in Kubota Orange, which is pretty sweet. You might say, well, Brad, we have a trailer. Why did you buy this? This does hold more um, wool pallets, number one. And that really is the main reason. Um, I think it holds, I think we can get like, boy, maybe eight, maybe ten more wool pallets on this thing. And, um, and it was cheap. And it's a gooseneck, so it'll go on the back of our Kubota um, pickup that we don't use a whole lot, so I thought that might be kind of nice. And uh, I think there was one other reason, but I can't remember what it was. It looks nice. I love this metal bed that it has on here. I think that looks just sweet. Nice, very nice looking trailer, actually. And you know what I just noticed? I didn't even think I, I don't even think I tried this. Do these ramps come out the back here? I think they might, right? It kind of looks like it, doesn't it? So, yeah. So, we have another trailer. Pretty nice. Pretty nifty. Um, I think what we want to do is we want to grab something, something like this. We can leave our sprayer here. I'm sorry, sheep. I know I let you down. But the grass is coming. It is on its way. Oh, and that trailer does um, also have auto load. It uses... Actually, it has two different auto loads you can use. Um, it has 82 Studios. That is an 82 Studios trailer, right? Am I, am I giving credit to the correct modder on that one? Yeah, it's 82 Studios. So, it has David's auto load. You can pick here. Um, I leave it on standard, and I use the universal auto load mod for the auto load system, just because I prefer the universal auto load mod. 
But now that I'm thinking about it, we're going to try David's auto load, actually, when we pick up our wool. Because I'm a little bit curious. I'm actually a little bit curious if his auto load will take more wool pallets than the universal auto load mod does. So, yeah, I think we might try that. If I remember to do that, I think we might try that. What I want to do, though, is I'd like to get a trailer of grass picked up if we can here on the on the uh, on the hurry to get over to our sheep I'm certain they can go a few hours without food but I respect our sheep they've done us well they've put a lot of money in the bank for us so I'm going to continue to treat them with the utmost with the utmost of respect if if at all humanly possible so y'all having a good weekend? I hope so. It's been fine for me. It's been quiet, actually. Weekends are amazing, but at the same time, in my convoluted way of thinking, they are somewhat depressing as well because you know that they go quick and then you're back to the weekly grind again. But... Um, I'm going to get as much enjoyment out of this weekend as I can. My um, One of my kids uh, reached out to me today and told me that... Um, I don't think it's new, new, but I didn't know about it. Uh, there's a Half-Life 2... Oh, boy. Now I can't remember the name of it. So like me. Um, I forget what it's called, but there's a... I guess there's a community... Half-Life 2 DLC. I think it's community-driven. I'm going to take a look at it. I think it is. There's actually a uh, two... A two. I think there's two of them. I think there's a original one, and then I think a newer one has come out not too long ago. I was a big Half-Life 2 fan. Well, this is quite a little hill we have going on here, isn't it? Yeah. Little Kubota's getting it on this hill. But yeah, I was a huge Half-Life uh, Half Life 2 fan when it came out. I was all over that. Uh, I played a lot of Half-Life 2. Um, you know, it doesn't... You know, graphics and stuff like that, compared to today's standards and stuff, it doesn't hold up as well anymore. But it's still a, it's still a fun game. It's still a lot of fun. And... Uh, so I'm going to check that out, I think, after we're done here in East Vineland. Um, I don't really have anything else as far as gaming right now that I'm super into, if I'm being honest with you. I've been getting a little bit of that truck simulator, the ETS, or even American truck kind of um, tickle again, like kind of that come and play me, you know, kind of thing. Um, so I might be picking that up again here soon. I, I've kind of, I've kind of been giving it some more thought and it's been a, it's been quite a while since I have, um, picked up American Truck Simulator. Probably even a little bit longer since I picked up Euro Truck. And, um, yeah, I've been kind of getting that urge. Well, what happened right there? What happened right there, did? Oh, is that why you're doing that? I don't think we have an option between back. Let me pull this. I oh, man, I don't know if we're gonna get. I thought I was able to dump it. <laughs> yeah, we'll let her just push those springs down in the back. That'll work. Oh man, I will never perfect dumping grass into this barn I don't think I think I should just give up and this is probably as good as it's going to get pushes those are those leaf springs or airbags back there they're probably airbags aren't they it looks like they're what are those is it Almost like shock absorbers. Oh, I think I see airbags right there, right? Yeah, there's airbags right there, I think. 
All right. Are you happy for a while, sheep? Yeah, you'll be happy for a while. That'll take care of you at least for the rest of April, actually, I would assume. So we can go ahead and I think what I'll do is we can drop this trailer. Drop this trailer off. We might as well drop it off back here. I think course play is going to make quick work out of this field. Oh my goodness, course play did make quick work out of this field, didn't it? It sure did. Holy cow. Alright, well that didn't take very long at all. Well, since we're back here, let's grab our Kubota and let's get another course going for... I didn't get too picky as you can see there. I did round our smooth corners and stuff. I just wanted to, I just wanted it to knock out these mow jobs because we'll clean that all up when we plow it. We're going to end up plowing that field and, <clears throat> excuse me, most likely we're going to end up plowing uh, this field as well. All right, Mr. Course Play, let's go back in here. Um, yeah, we don't want that. We want to create a job. It likes to, it's been, it's been weird. It hasn't been defaulting to the, uh, to the field that I'm on. And I've had that happen before, and I don't really know why it does that, but it's easy enough to just select the field you're on and, and go to town. Uh, let's open the course generator. Couple headlands should do the trick. Center, smooth, same old thing. Let's create the course. That looks hunky-dory. I really love course play. And uh, we'll start at the first waypoint. And we are on swath dropping as we should be. You good to go, buddy? Yeah? Okay. Just checking. And whoops. And I'm going to drop off our trailer back here because we're not going to pick up the rest of this grass uh, right now we're going to go over and pick up our sprayer and we're going to get these weeds uh, taken care of real quickly I don't think it'll take long to take care of these weeds looks like the mower's doing a good job outstanding Oh, and the other thing that we have done, um, I spent a little cash on, is upgraded our silo, our fermenting silo over there. And to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure what the new amount that it will hold is. I think our old one was like 330 or 350,000 liters. And this is the, that was the small, this is the medium. So I don't know if it's going to be double that or whatever, but we'll find out. All I know is it'll be less trips for me um, hauling grass back and forth and uh, from our storage barn over there. I don't think it ferments any faster. I think it just holds more. And, and honestly, it's, it seems to ferment... I, it seems like it does a pretty darn good job, you know, as far as how quickly it goes through the fermentation. It actually seems to be just, I got kind of the feeling that it kind of was about the same time as it would take in a bunker silo almost, you know, like that kind of thing. Uh, what are we doing here? We are using GPS. We're going to hook up our GPS here. And we're going to get lined up at least roughly. And let's load that. Let's get the correct width going on. Set a zero course. Uh, get it facing the right direction. That actually looks pretty good. We'll miss some up yonder, but we can always... Nope, Brad. Don't fold it. Thank you very much. But we can always get whatever we miss up there um 
we could probably turn on our crop sensor. I don't know if that's necessary, but we will turn on the crop sensor. And this does have, I think, the the sea and spray. I believe I've got that installed. Yes, indeed, Lee, we do. And it looks like it's doing what it's supposed to do. It looks like it's taking care of whatever weeds it finds, I guess. Not exactly sure how this is going to impact our <clears throat> um, environmental score. I can't imagine precision farming. I would think it would prefer that we use non-herbicidal methods. But... Um, too bad <laughs> too, too bad on that one and i think it would be okay with the fact that we're doing the sea and spray right since we're not just you know pushing on the herbicide everywhere in the field so i would think we'd at least get some kudos for being um a little bit environmentally friendly with the uh sea and spray i'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick headland are you not seeing any? Oh, there you go. We're just going to do a quick headland here so we have a little bit of room to maneuver. And this will pretty much take care of our, I think, care, take care of our sunflowers until they're ready for harvest. It's kind of nice with precision farming to not have to do the multiple um, fertilizing like you kind of have to do. You're going to hit that pole. Yep. That's okay. You can hit the pole a little bit. But yeah, it's kind of nice to not have to do the, you know, the, the double fertilizing layer business like you have to do normally without precision farming. I kind of dig that. And the sea and spray is a little mesmerizing. I kind of like it. We missed a, a lane over here I'm going to hit. I'm going to go ahead and hit this while we're over here. Not the fastest sprayer in the world. What is it? Uh, seven? About seven miles an hour? Maybe eight if you're lucky? I guess that's not too bad. It's about what we'd probably be getting with a weeder, I suppose. Or a hoe. A slow hoe. NFL playoffs start this weekend. I don't know if any of you are into that or if your team has <clears throat> made it to the uh, postseason. Of course, my Chicago Bears were quite possibly, and in all fairness, the worst football team this year in the NFL um, but they do have the number one draft pick coming up which they'll probably give away for I don't know having hot dogs in the locker room that would be my guess who knows it's it's a it's a stinking mess in that organization but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that one day one day before I leave this planet that I will see them at least be competitive. I know that my uh, my grandpa was a <clears throat> um, diehard um, Chicago Cubs fan. And um, that was a really big thing because he uh, he was getting on in years and um, he um, and we would say you know grandpa you know he well he would actually always say you know that, that he would just love to see his cubbies you know win the win the championship and I think he would have settled even for a National League championship, but I think, you know, uh, you know, overall he wanted the World Series champion and 
And they, there was always, you know, that whole thing where, you know, they were cursed and so on and so forth. And, and uh, his last year alive uh, was the year that the Cubs won the uh, World Series. And, uh, and I thought that was, you know, it was really special for him. And he was able to enjoy it. Um, he was pretty healthy all the way through pretty much his entire life. And he was able to see his Cubbies win the World Series, which I thought was pretty amazing for him. I'm a Cubs fan, but I just don't really follow baseball that much, if I'm being honest with you. Um, baseball and basketball just not uh just not that really into too much other than football it's pretty much football and hockey for me um both college and professional but uh college sports do sometimes have a have a better feel to them don't they in a lot of ways but i tell you what though not to be spoilery and i won't even give away scores or anything but Boy, the national championship game was, yeah, not pleasant. But uh, I thought the Ohio State-Georgia game was, uh, well, everybody, I think, thought the Ohio State-Georgia game was far better. But uh, I still enjoy college football quite a lot. And uh, this year, this year I enjoyed it much more because my Minnesota Gophers at least did play relatively well. And uh, won their bowl. I forget what bowl. There's so many bowls, right? I mean, literally, aren't there like 20 or 30 college bowl games? It's crazy. And there's, you know, there's only one reason for it. It's the cash, right? It's, it's the money. You know, show me the money. Big time. But... We all enjoy watching. Well, we're not all of us, but they they bring in the numbers, though. It's pretty amazing. I've thought about this, too. You know, when you sit down and you think about how much professional athletes make, um, and let's say you've got, let's just say, we'll just take any football team. I think during the season, they're, what, 52? I think they have to bring their roster down to, what, 52? And if I'm right about that, I think that's right. And, but they also have, of course, practice squad, you know, so they've got all those players that, that don't suit up on Sunday. They're just there to get beat up during the week. And you look at the salaries and you just add all that up. It boggles the mind how much money is in sports. It really does blow me away. It really does. I mean, players are making millions, and and it's just I, I can't fathom how much you know if you owned a professional football team, how much money you would have to bring in to pay for all that, not just salaries and players. Not just player salaries, but for your management and for stadium. And I mean, it's just insanity how much cash goes in and out of hands with professional sports in general. Huh. I'm just noticing you can definitely see the spray so much better from this angle. It almost disappears from here. I wonder if it's just... Is that just lighting? It must just be the way the game is handling the lighting on it. Huh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just stop right there. Stop right there, young man. All right. Well, that was easy enough. get our get our weeding done thank you very much just out of curiosity what's our precision farming yelling at us now oh it's still at 71 i don't know how fast this uh updates 
but uh, I'll be curious if it dings us a little bit for using the devil's herbicide. I wonder, um, we will be using quite a lot of the liquid um, slurry for fertilizer, so I'm going to guess we might make up for any naughtiness we incur from using herbicide. I know I've got some Canadian subscribers and viewers and I was watching and I'm and, and I don't know this overall the specifics but I was watching a Canadian farmer a gentleman I watch quite a bit I think it's Mike something he, I've talked about him before he he lives on the border there of Canada and I think it's uh, Manitoba or uh, Montana in the states here he lives right there on that owns a lot of property there on that border and boy man sometimes listening to him talk about uh legislation in canada for farmers i i just it's almost jaw-dropping how much um wow it's in, in so many different levels um and of course, I'm listening to one person's, you know, one person's side. A farmer nonetheless, but it's his opinion. It, I mean, he gives facts, but on top of those facts, he expresses, he, you know, expresses his opinion. And it's just like, wow, man. I don't know how farmers, I don't know how farmers make money. I, I honestly don't. Half the time I, I listen to these farmers and I'm just like, how do you make money? I mean, I just don't get it. I watched, uh, you know, Clarkson's farm, and what did he make at the end of his first year? It was like it was like uh, eighty bucks or something. It was it was pence. It was nothing, and it just amazes me. It, it's just it, it boggles my mind. It, it really truly does, and I just feel for them. My heart goes out to farmers. Um, yeah, it's just a shame. It's just an absolute shame. Um, what am I doing? <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm looking for our... There, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking for our little Kubota mower deal here. We're going to load the course, activate it. I think that's what I need to do. Uh, first waypoint, that is Correctamundo. Correctamundo. Who was that? Was that the Fonz? Oh, the fonts. The good old days of happy days. And YouTube sometimes offers the weirdest suggestions for me. Um, do you get weird suggestions from YouTube as well, or is it just me? Because I, I, I turned on YouTube this morning, and in my suggestion list was the first episode of Fantasy Island. What? I, I And then I started thinking, you know, where, where, where is it getting that? You know, what was I, was I doing research on, you know, tattoos? Was I, I don't know. What, I don't know what I was doing that, that would make them want to do Fantasy Island. I don't really get it. I love how I pull over to our... I pull over to our garden hose so I can bring out our water gun. That's... That's... That's thinking right there, huh? But yeah, sometimes YouTube gives me the weirdest suggestions. Of course I watched it. You know, because it's Fantasy Island. Um, it wasn't... It wasn't a good episode. And it was long, too. I didn't realize. I don't know if, like... The first episode of Fantasy Island, the pilot, um, it was like an hour and a half, like an hour and 40 minutes. They must have done like a, a made-for-TV movie, you know, just to see if they could, you know, get viewership, I guess, first or something. But, yeah, and, and it struck me, you know, how much I remember really liking that show, even as a younger, you know, as a kid. And I know our family... You know, you had the, 
if I remember right, I think that was a weekend show, if I remember right. Um, I think Love Boat, I think, was also around that time. Um, but what struck me as interesting, let me fire this thing up. What struck me as interesting was Tattoo, the little, the little guy who runs up and down those stairs and rings the bell, you know, when the plane's coming in, doing the whole da plane, da plane. Why did they make that little guy do that? That's mean. They're really mean. And I think Mr. Rourke, like, got off on it. I think he enjoyed watching that little dude run up and down those stairs every time a plane came. I would have looked up at Mr. Rourke and been like, dude, it's a plane. You can hear it five miles away. I'm not running up and down that stupid bell tower for your kicks and enjoyment. You know what I'm saying? Plus, I'm a little guy. You know, my little legs aren't going to get up. And I mean, it's, it's hard on me, man. What was that dude's name? Is Herbie Valaquez or something like Herbie, Herbie Vasquez or Valaquez or something like that? Poor guy. Jeez. Mr. Rourke was sadistic, man. He was he was creepy. He was extra creepy. Whoa, holy cow, man. We are filling this trailer up. Like, fast. I see what I'm going to be doing for the next hour and a half is running, <laughs> running the stinking grass back and forth. Be nice to have a nice long conveyor belt all the way from back here, all the way up to the to our fermenting silo. But yeah, man, I mean, he and he always had this weird grin on his face. I don't know. They, they and you know, it's funny to see like shows, like pilots and stuff like that, and how the show kind of matures and progresses over time and stuff. And I'll tell you, I don't remember Mr. War, Mr. Wark, Wark, right? Like with a W, I think it was. I don't think it's York. I think it was Wark, something weird like that. I don't remember him being quite so creepy. Like, like he was really giving off a creepy vibe. And and I'm thinking, you know, I don't remember him being quite that much of a weirdo. But really turned me off, man, that he made little tattoo run up and down those stairs to ring that bell. That's not cool, man. That's not cool at all. And it, and it never made sense either, because you know he'd be out of breath for like an hour or so. I mean, that tower, it wasn't like a 50-foot tower, but it wasn't exactly a two-story. You know, and then he had to reach up and ring the bell. He could barely reach the bell. And then he's yelling, the plane, the plane. No kidding, the plane. It's a twin turbo prop. You could hear the thing from miles away. It doesn't take rocket science to say the plane is here. Then he comes back down. The first thing he has Tattoo do is get him a drink. What a dick. Dude, the guy just got done running up a tower for you. <laughs> the little guy just got done running up and down a tower to ring a bell for something that's like super obvious that has arrived. And now you're making him get you a drink? Shoot. He's not R2-D2, man. He's he's just a little guy. You treat him like dirt. Tell you what, man. Wouldn't get away with that today. There'd be all kinds of human rights after Mr. Rourke. would be like, uh-uh. Get your own drink. You want a drink? Get your own drink. You want, you want that bell rung? I'll ring your bell. That's right. Go up and ring it yourself, man. Here's a thought. It's a plane. Listen. You'll know when it's coming in. Open your ears, man. It's crazy. Crazy town. And then they, you know, and I and I I forgot this, but in the pilot they were talking about uh, how much it costs. Um for for a three night stay on Fantasy Island. Right? 
fifty thousand dollars for three nights on Fantasy Island. Jeez, man. What a racket. What a stinking racket. And Mr. Rourke still had the audacity to treat the little guy bad like that, you know? For 50 grand, he could have got an automated bell tower. Or he could have had like a... Oh, he, or, here's a thought. You know, let Tattoo use a megaphone or a speaker system. You know? Or, or, oh man. Oh man. Longer rope. You know what I'm saying? From the bell? Just get like a 30 foot rope or a 40 foot rope and drape it over the side so little tattoo can just stand down there on the ground and ring the bell from the ground instead of making him run up and down the stairs. Jeez, that doesn't take a lot of thought. Whoa, Brad. And then, well, they probably tried that. And Little Tattoo probably tried to hang himself because he was so stinking miserable. You know, getting bossed around by Mr. Rourke. You know, they probably did have a long rope for him and he probably tried to hang himself. They probably had to get rid of it. And instead of saying, oh, man, you must be miserable, you know, you try to hang yourself because I make you run up and down those stairs to ring that stupid bell. Well, we're just going to get rid of the long rope. You know, we're not going to get you counseling or anything like that or try to teach you ha or try to treat you halfway dis decent there, Tattoo. It's not cool, man. Mr. Rourke was not cool. And I, and I think the show was, like, trying to give us an idea that he had, like magical or some kind of mystic powers or something like that shoot the mistreatment of little people shoot this, there's no magic <laughs> there's no magic there tattoo and I'll tell you a tattoo should have just given him the old one two right there in the old sack you know because that's about his height right just do a straightforward you know one two Rourke down for the count There's your stinking plane, Mr. Rourke. Ring your bell. See how you like it. <laughs> but otherwise, the show was the show wasn't that good. It had some dude on there that he was a you know some big game hunter, I guess, and he wanted to be hunted instead um, because he like had I don't know some kind of guilt thing about hunting about being a big game hunter or something and he was so he wanted to be hunted and then it just got weird and some chick showed up in the middle of the night and they were chained together it just got weird and then there was this other girl um there were three fantasies the second one was this lady wanted to be at her own funeral um so that she could see what people thought of her are you that like are you that insecure? And do you think of yourself as being that bad of a person that you actually pay $50,000 for a three-night stay with creepy Mr. Rourke who abuses little people so that they can set up your funeral, invite all your friends and family, put, put you in a disguise so that you can hear how people talk about you because they think you're dead. And the third, what was the third one? There was funeral chick. There was hunt guy, hunted guy. Um, I forget what the third one was. It, it wasn't, it wasn't very interesting, I don't think. Not that the other two were particularly, you know, groundbreaking. But I cut a lot of slack. This is 19, you know, 19, what, 1970s, late 70s? Mid, late 70s kind of thing? It's like Dallas. I cut these shows a lot of slack because that's just the way, you know, TV was back then. You know, they, it was just a different, 
it was a different ball game, you know. Number one, you had much less of a selection. Um, I mean, you were pretty much stuck with whatever garbage was on the main networks, right? And, um, you know, they didn't have CGI and all this stuff, so everything was pretty much just... You just knew it was on a Hollywood lot, you know. You saw the same set of trees over and over again <clears throat> um, on Fantasy Island, so you know that it's just in probably some guy's backyard in Santa Cruz or something like that, you know, where they're filming. Who knows? But So it's not fancy, but I look past that because it's 70s TV and it's kind of, you know, kind of weird that way anyways, but... Yeah, I can't remember what the third fantasy was. It was some other narcissistic goofball that was on there, you know, that just, I don't know. It was weird. It was just weird. I think you can actually watch quite a few um, episodes of Fantasy Island on YouTube. I think they have quite a few of them out there. But this one came up in my feed, and it was Saturday morning, and it was either that... Um, or I was kind of actually starting... Uh, I kind of wanted to watch a little Power Ranger action, right? Because it's been a few years since I've watched any Power Rangers. Um, I didn't grow up with Power Rangers, but I, but my kids did, which made me watch Power Rangers. And that show is just goofy enough to where I miss it sometimes. Um, but yeah. So it was... <laughs> So it was the pilot episode of <laughs> of Fantasy Island or Power Rangers Super Samurai, I think is what I was going to tap into um, with Jaden and I forget what the rest of them, what their names were. I think it was Mike and Jaden and stuff, but I'll tell you the one season of Power Rangers that I kind of really liked that I actually am willing to admit that I actually did kind of enjoy was the um, uh, it was after Super Samurai and it was the um, it was when they, they had like all of the previous Power Rangers that they could morph into um, and I forget what that was called but so you could see old school Power Rangers with their also all the way up to current and I think you could I think they could morph into any of the previous Power Rangers, if I remember right. They may have left out some of the goofy ones, because there's some goofy... There's some goofy Power Ranger seasons. And I seem to remember that the Power Ranger seasons kind of alternated between... Um, what I would call, like, the, the original style Power Rangers, where they're just people on planet Earth, defending Earth. And then it seemed like it was always the next season you got the weird Power Ranger stuff. The uh, Power Ranger um, uh, SPD out in space. I don't know. I just remember SPD Emergency or something like that. Or Turbo, Power Rangers Turbo. And then there was some Power Rangers uh, Dinosaur or Dino or something. And I always looked forward to the seasons that were based on Earth. I always thought they were a little bit better. I don't know, just more... They were. I, I, I just enjoyed that, that style a little bit better. Fortunately, my kids did. Um, my kids did as well, which was kind of nice. So I wasn't forced to watch too much goofiness. I lucked out as a parent, I think, with both of my boys because neither one of them really enjoyed some some of the things that I know I probably would have lost my mind over like I never had to go through a Barney stage um, with them oh that was good timing just a little 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 turd right there left over but yeah I never had to go through the Barney stage or that tickle me Elmo crap I was lucky the worst I had to go through, and, and, and it's not even bad, was my youngest really, really liked um, the Mickey Mouse... Uh, was it Mickey Mouse Playhouse? So I had to deal with Mickey Mouse with some Disney stuff for a bit. Um, 
But other than that, they were... Uh, yeah, I was lucky. I was lucky. I didn't have to deal with Tickle Me Elmo. Hey, and, and Blue's, uh, Blue's Clues, which is awesome. So I didn't mind them watching Blue's Clues at all. Um, I could deal with Blue's Clues, you know. But I feel like I was kind of lucky as far as that goes. Because I know some other parents who had to deal with the uh, Tickle Me Elmo and... Oh, Barney. And I honestly don't ever remember my kids really watching Sesame Street at all. Like, I don't think it interested them at all. I think they... You know, I mean, again, you know, when they're growing up, the selection was so much better than what we had when we were growing up. You, I mean, it's kids programming was pretty much PBS or... Saturday morning cartoons, you know, you had, uh, what was it, School of Rock? Or, uh, is that what it was called? That's the movie, School of Rock, right? Saturday morning, you know what I'm talking about, you know, I'm only a bill and I live on top of Capitol Hill, that kind of stuff. And we had, you know, of course, you know, all the <clears throat> Bugs Bunny stuff and whatnot. But you pretty much got what your antenna could get you, and that was it, you know. It's weird how things change and people change with that, you know. Like I, like today, if 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 we had the, if if tomorrow we woke up and all we had was antenna TV for local broadcast, people would lose their minds. Absolutely lose their freaking minds. I suppose if you had YouTube, that would pacify some people. And Twitter. Or Twitch, sorry. I suppose if you had Twitch and YouTube. And... Uh, but you have to get rid of Netflix. All the streamings are gone. Cable, gone, you know. It'd be anarchy. Absolute anarchy. I wouldn't be happy. I'm not saying I wouldn't be happy. I mean, I, I think I'd lose my mind, too. I think I'd, you know, I would, I would lose my freaking mind as well, if I'm being honest. So, count me in on that. I'm too, uh... I am way too invested in, um streaming TV and and all that stuff you know I sad I will sadly admit that that I wish I did spend more time I wish I did spend more time reading and I should spend more time off the TV and reading and stuff like that but I always feel guilty because you know when you're an Amazon uh, prime member, you um, monthly they give away a free Kindle book, and they there's like a selection. I don't know if it's like nine or ten options sometimes or whatever, and you can pick one for free. And every time I get the email that says, "Hey, you know, your free monthly read is available," I, I just an, an immediate whole body feel, feeling of guilt washes over me because I normally will get that email when I'm watching TV and on my iPad and I will sit there and think to myself man Brad really you know pick up a book you know it's just it's just that immediate feeling of that would be so much better for you than to sit here and, and be watching uh, TV all the time but I pick my free book and the feeling goes away and then I'm done and watch TV again. <laughs> I'm watching TV again. So <laughs> pretty I'm <laughs> pretty sad. <laughs> pretty sad and pathetic. <laughs> oh goodness. I have rambled on way too long, but it is a it is a Sunday edition of Kubota Farm and and uh, I'd rather spend it with you all than um, than not. So, but I am going to get this wrapped up now. I'm going to continue um, this grass journey. Um, I think you all have probably seen enough mowing and um, grass pickup. Um, 
so I will probably get this uh, all finished up here before Monday comes around. And uh, I appreciate again y'all putting up with me and joining me. Hopefully my rant didn't uh, offend anybody. Uh, you know, keep in mind when I when I say when I get into these rants, you know, they're they're meant to be, you know. Well, whether they come out this way or not, me, but they're meant to be lighthearted. They're not meant to be like. Don't take it too seriously, because I know some people probably would, and that's not my intention. My intention is to have fun with it. So, thanks for joining me. Leave a like if you would, uh, if you did enjoy the video, of course, you know, and uh, subscribe if you want. That'd be great. And uh, take care of yourselves, you know, and uh, take care of other people. Do something nice for somebody today. It's Sunday. You always feel better about yourself when you do something nice for somebody, you know. And uh, I do it so infrequently <laughs> that when I do something nice for somebody, it is special. It's pretty special. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, y'all. Um, I'll see you hopefully back here Monday in East Vineland. Take care. Bye for now.